Till now, we have learned how we can forcefully make our way into wireless network. We learned a lot of attacks and these attacks are known as pre-connection attack. Now we are going to learn what we are going to do once we have connected to a wireless network. So let's jump right into it. So in this video, we are going to learn a very famous attack which is the ARP spoofing or ARP cache poisoning or ARP table poisoning as many of you call it. Before I jump into the practical of ARP spoofing, it's necessary to understand the theory behind ARP spoofing, what ARP packet is and etc. So let's discuss more on that. Consider this network where there are three devices, host A, B and C. Well, any device in a network is called a host. So we have host A, host B and host C connected to a wireless network. Remember that A is not connected to B and B is not connected to C and C is not connected to A directly, but they are all connected to the gateway or the router. Now each device in the network has their own IP address and a MAC address. Remember that the IP address of each host is being assigned by the router, which is the DHCP in most cases, whereas the MAC address is the address that is being provided to you by the manufacturer. Now what happens is, let's suppose the host A wants to contact host C. It wants to communicate and send some packet to host C. In that case, host A must know the IP address of host C as well as the MAC address. But in our case, let's suppose host A does not know the MAC address as it is. So what it's gonna do is, it's gonna go and look at the ARP cache table and finds that it does not have the MAC address corresponding to IP4 which is host C. So what it's gonna do is, it's going to initiate an ARP request. How does ARP request work? Host A creates a packet which is ARP which has similar to the following syntax. Who has IP4? Tell MAC2. It sends the packet to the gateway and the gateway forwards it to all the devices present in the network. Now only that device will respond whose IP address matches the IP address which has been forwarded in the ARP. In my case, the host C is going to respond by saying IP4 is at MAC4. In this way, what happens is both host A and host C gets to know the IP address as well as MAC address of both the devices. Now in this case, host A go to know the MAC address of host C. So it's just going to update the ARP table by writing IP4 is at MAC4. In this way, host A now knows the MAC address of host C and it can now communicate with each other. Now here, an attacker can take this advantage because our packet is a trusted packet and any attacker can spoof and intrude an ARP packet into any other device. So that's what ARP spoofing is and we are going to take advantage of that. Alright, so now let's jump into the practical aspect of ARP spoofing. Now back in the days when I was learning hacking, I tried performing ARP spoofing on my virtual machine. And I found out that if you are using a virtual machine, you're going to face an error in terms of forwarding packets. Right now you might not understand what I'm saying, but when you'll be performing and research a little bit about it on your virtual machine, you'll find out that you won't be able to perform post connection attack that well in a virtual environment. So I request you to boot up using your USB and perform attacks in that bootable Kali Linux. So let me spin up a bootable Kali Linux real quickly and then we'll meet right after there. Okay, so I am in my bootable Kali Linux and towards the right hand side you can see a mobile device which is the victim. Now to all those who don't know how to spin up a bootable image of a Kali Linux, well I have already made a video on that, you can go ahead and watch on it. I will leave the link in the description below or a card will appear at the top right corner. Okay, cool. Now we are going to perform ARP spoofing on it. The first step is to go and connect to the wireless network using the wireless adapter. I have already connected to the Wi-Fi by network which is the network that I am targeting. Now let me just go ahead and type ifconfig to show that I am using the VLAN0 interface and my IP address in that particular interface is the one that is ending with .4. Alright, so keep in mind your IP address. Now we need to learn the IP address of the gateway. So type route space hyphen n and that is the IP address of our gateway or the router. So that ends with a dot one. 
So having understood that, now we are going to scan the entire network. So if you don't know how to scan the entire network using an nmap, well I have made an nmap course, you can go ahead and watch that. I'll leave the link in the description below or a card will appear at the top right corner. Alright, so we just got the scan report. Now as you can see, the first report is for 192.168.101.1 which is the router. The second scan report is for a device which is having an IP address that is ending with 101.2. The third one is with the domain name the point pc that ends with 101.5 and the fourth ip address is ours so what we what i'm going to do is i'm going to show the ip address of the victim and towards the right hand side let me go to the wi-fi section and as you can see it's the same as the one which is on the left hand side which is 101.2 so having remembered the victim's ip address we're gonna need it for our future usage First thing is to run etacap which is used in ARP spoofing. You can run etacap-g or you can go to that particular icon right there and click on it and then type etacap graphical. And choose the wireless interface or which you have connected. In my case it's VLAN 0. And now click on the tick at the top right corner. Now we need to add targets so that it can perform ARP spoofing. We need to have two targets, one is target 1 and target 2. Target 1 should always be your router and target 2 will be your victim. Now since we know the IP address so there is no need to scan for host by clicking on the magnifying glass. You can go ahead and click on those three dots and click on targets and click on current targets. Afterwards in target 1 section click on add and add the IP address of the router. Now in target 2 add the IP address of the victim. Alright, all set. Now what is left is we need to just initiate the ARP spoofing but before I do that let me open Wireshark which is a packet analyzing tool to show what's happening beneath the sheet when we perform the ARP spoof attack. So let me just arrange everything left and right so it looks clear. Let me choose VLAN 0 interface so that we can analyze the packets there. Alright, now we have to execute the ARP spoofing. For that, go ahead and click on that earth icon and then click on ARP poisoning. Click on OK. Now as soon as I hit OK, look on the left hand side, you can see a lot of packets which includes ARP packets as well. So let me go ahead and filter on the basis of ARP packet. So let me search ARP and hit enter. And as you can see, we just got a lot of ARP packets. Let me just zoom it a bit so that it, it will be easier for you to see. And as you can make note that a lot of ARP packets have been spoofed by our Etacap. And Wireshark is intelligent enough to say that it can identify ARP poisoning. That way it's, that's why it says duplicate use of IP addresses detected. So you can use basically Wireshark to identify whether there is any ARP poisoning or not. Alright, back to the subject. Uh, we have successfully ARP poisoned our victims. Now, on the right hand side there's the device and that victim is going to log in to a form. Remember that ARP poisoning is going to sniff for this username and password only on HTTP websites and not on HTTPS. Now as soon as he logs in, look at the left hand side. We just got the username and the password inside that text area. Let me highlight that for you. This is the username and the password. So as you can see, we just basically got the login information in an HTTP website. Remember, it always works on HTTP and not on HTTPS because HTTPS is secured using SSL. And that was all about our poisoning. In the next video, we're going to learn a much greater attack, which is DNS cache poisoning. And I will see you right there.